All right, let's look at a little project here. This is the PIC 16F57. It has 20 I.O. pins and a single 8-bit timer, and it has an external input for that timer, and that's it. Very simple device, and we're going to be building a lot of these so we can build lots of electronics. Big deal, I'm blinking an LED. What can this thing do? Hmm, let us see. All right, so far I've showed you blinking a single LED. What can we do with this? Here are some of the upcoming projects. The next video coming up, okay, I'm counting binary on eight LEDs. Big deal. But that one, you're going to learn to use the internal 8-bit timer with an 8-bit prescaler. Pin 1 is a, it has a Smith trigger input for an external pulse. I happen to use a 60 hertz time base I saved from my VCR servicing days in the 1980s. Or another source of 60 or 120 hertz is our zero crossing detector circuits that I discussed on different pages on the main on the website. We will look at how to use external time bases and so forth and how to use the single timer that is in this particular device. When we get this down, our next stage is how to connect LCD displays. There are, you can use a full, a full 8-bit output. You can use the 4-bit thing that a lot of people like to use that I've done that. Or you can use a serial LCD display and I've done that as well. In this case, in this image, you have a full, you're connecting all eight data bits right to an 8-bit data port. Hey, I got 20 I.O. pins. I got plenty of pins to use. What else can we do? After we learn that, we can learn how to connect a 4x4 keypad. such as this image here, I happen to use, in that case, a serial LCD display. I use my keypad and it worked fine. And a lot more is coming up. Once we get the, particularly once we get our LCD displays working, we can work on interfacing all kinds of sensors and so forth. So let's move back and learn something on the basics inside the PIC 16F57. Here is our wiring schematic. The PIC 16F57 is a 28-pin device. It has three I.O. ports, a 4-bit port, R, port A is a 4-bit, RA0 through 3. Port B is an 8-bit port, RB0 through RB7. And port C is RC0 through RC7. You can program the 57 with in-circuit serial programming, which is what I do. In the video, you saw my programmer. It is a XG Pro programmer. Uh, if you're going to use a K150, you have to use it according to the software as in-circuit programming. I don't know if it'll work plugging it into the socket. To get this going up and running, all you need bare minimum if you're not doing in-circuit programming is a single 10K pull-up resistor, a crystal, and two 22 PF capacitors. I have used 22 PF and I ran this at 4 megahertz, which is what I normally use, and I ran it at 16 megahertz. Here is your V, here's where your VPP from your programmer goes. Here's your clock. Here is your data. I use a blocking diode so that the 5 volts can pull this up. 
to VCC minus 0.6. This, this reset switch will reset the device. And the diode blocks the VPP voltage from backing up into the 5 volt power supply. If you're using the XG Pro that I use, a bit of advice, if you're going to leave it connected, you have to have it powered up. If you have it powered down and have it connected, the chip will not run. You can look this uh, chart up on the uh, web page whose link will be in the description and you can pull this up. Let's compare the 16F57 to the 16F84A. The 57 has twice the flash, four more bytes of SRAM, but it has no EEPROM, which I don't care. I don't use EEPROMs on these anyway. I have 20 I.O. pins as opposed to 13. Neither has PWM units, no US arts, no comparators, and both each have one 8-bit timer. Difference? This one is $1.35. This one is $5. And I get twice the flash, seven more I.O. pins, and so forth. Okay. The... Uh, 84A does have interrupts and some internal pull-ups. The 57 does not have those. But you can get but I can get around that with programming. So compare those two in your mind. We'll be moving up eventually to the 620 to the 84A, the 628. And everything I'm doing down here with the 57s with some modification can be used with the more advanced chips. All right, here's the very basic program to blink that one LED you saw in the short video beforehand. This is going to be quite a bit different than what you're used to, I would say, if you've been doing PIC programming. First of all, why would I want to use a PIC over an Arduino? I can do anything I can dream of with a PIC. I can't with an Arduino. It's too much of a headache to get into the hardware. Nonetheless, <coughs> excuse me, this is our sample program. It is programmed in it with MPLAB 10 using the XC8 extension that programs these lower end controllers. What is going to be different, just briefly looking at it, it's going to be quite different from the old um, older versions of C the pick basic when it's proprietary problems and the and the assembly you will not have any more of this include your you have no more of this include these include files and pick numbers or whatever you will not have this long strung out line here to set the bits to set up the chip such as chip protect and so and watchdog timer off and so forth what you have is you'll have include xc.h and that's for all of them doesn't matter what pick you're using that's what you use the compiler will figure out the rest for you instead of that long stuff you use the pragma command config watchdog timer off um chip protect off and i set this up for xt i use a four megahertz crystal you define your crystal frequency and you have to do this crystal frequency four million and you'll see ul that's unsigned long that tells what variable to you it it's part of it where it calculates your time delays Okay, Tris, you use a can't command called Tris. You'll find out momentarily that you can't, there is no Tris register you can access. It is a command. You load a value. If you're down in assembly, you load a value into the working register, call Tris B, and it will place that value there to determine the direction of your I.O. pins. 
In this case, it's just Tris B00. I made all of port B outputs. Then port B equals 00. I cleared the port. Simple while loop. Um, this line here toggles the an LED connected to RB0. Here is my delay routine, and it just goes on forever. Rinse, repeat. 